So I have the pleasure to be with Patrick McKeown, who I've known for, ooh, 10 years? 10 years, Ten years must be. Yeah, yeah, Patrick, um, one of the good guys, I promise you. And Patrick is a um, trainer. He trains people to become Butego practitioners. And I think you have... I think you're one of the leading lights, if not the leading light, I think, in the potato world. Yeah, I think it's it's a it's a method that, you know, since its evolution from Russia to the Western world, um, I've been involved with it since 2002, and we've really seen, a, you know, a, a, an increase in awareness and an increase in awareness in nose breathing, and I've been happy to be part of that. Um, and a number of fronts in terms of books, DVD sets... Badger, training, you've done well. You have. You've yeah, done. You know. Great. And you've. 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 You know. You, you've. You've. You've stuck to it. You've. Uh-huh. Um, you know. You, you. You've had to live a modest lifestyle mm. for a long period of time, mm-hmm. as I have done. Sure. For sure. In, in order yeah. to get this message yeah. out. Yeah. Well, thing, Mike, that's know? what it's about. When you're an innovator and you're coming out with something new, and while it's when it's different to what mainstream is doing, and the thing about Buteco which drove me was. I knew about the benefits of nose breathing. I knew about the benefits for sleep, for asthma, for concentration, for anxiety. And of course, with your work, the emphasis on nose breathing for normal craniofacial growth, or as you say, reaching your full potential. Genetic potential, yeah. Yes. Um, but this is, not, this is new information for a lot of people because this information, despite us knowing so much about it, it's still not mainstream. No, no, it, it does mesh very well because I, there's no way I can get someone to change their aura, their tongue posture. Uh-huh. They're not going to put the tongue on the roof of the mouth if they've got a blocked nose. They yes. can't be that. And yes. So, I, you know, it, 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 and it makes sense what you say. To me, it makes mm-hmm. very logical sense what you say. Mm-hmm. And nasal obstruction is the biggest cause of mouth breathing and usually you know with the vast majority of cases you can decongest the nose by simply holding the breath this was talked about since 1923 breath holding in man and an animal can help to reduce nasal resistance you can open up your nose by simply taking a normal breath into your nose a normal breath out to your nose pinch your nose hold your breath gently nod your head up and down hold your breath until you feel a medium to strong air hunger then let go Breathe in through your nose, calm your breathing, wait a minute, do it again. Do it five or six times. Leave a minute's rest in between each and you'll find your nose will open up. Do it once. So, so do, it, do it once. Okay. Yeah, because I've, I can notice that if I start getting a blocked nose, I just I do what, exactly what Patrick said and it instantly clears every time. I, it, I hate it, Patrick. <laughs> I hate doing it. I do. It's not so bad to do. I, I do. I'm an, I'm an, I'm an, I'm an ex-asthmatic. Sure, For me sure. to cut off my yes. air, I hate it. I, I literally, know that is the thing I've about even, asthma. I've even sworn your name before when I'm lying <laughs> in bed. Particularly at the beginning, you know, the beginning of the summer, when yes, the hay yes. fever starts yes. coming yes. in. But even with hay fever, it will still have to decongest enough. Yeah, yeah totally. totally. No. I, I, I hate that last little bit when you've got hay fever yes. you, you could notice it's on you you can yes. feel it in your sinuses yes. and I know I'm going to go to bed in five minutes and when as I lie down into the bed <clears throat> all of a sudden whoosh, my nose yes. passes you can all clear up yes. the up well you know here it is like allergic rhinitis if you have hay fever or if you have perennial rhinitis that your nose is a bit stuffy every day for about an hour or so your sleep disorder breathing increases twofold you so would do. Yeah, a yeah, person yeah, with allergic yeah. rhinitis, they're 1.8 times li- more likely to have sleep problems. If you have rhinitis, if you have asthma, you tend to be tired. It's not just the upper airways that's affected. It's not just the lower airways. It's also your sleep. Yeah, I've got a very good um, idea on this one, Patrick. Okay. Well, I, it's, it's gonna, it would take too much explanation just for the moment <laughs> now. But I think that the, the, because the anatomy of the back of the throat is so fundamentally different in people now different muscles groups are having to work Mm -hmm. and i think that we're now engaging neural pathways no neural pathways that would have been conscious Mm -hmm. previously Mm -hmm. to maintain sections of our the the state of you know muscular effort or muscular balance Mm -hmm. when we go to sleep yes and of course that's keeping people awake Mm-hmm. And is preventing them from completely switching off. You see, the anatomy in the back of the throat here has sure. changed just that little bit. And because that anatomy has changed that bit, different elements on the tongue 
Yeah. And now having to maintain an open airway at night. Sure. So sure. That what it does is it just feeds into your conscious. You can't ever totally switch off mm -hmm. because you, you, you're doing what, you know, you can't you're change some of the basic wiring of, yes. you know, we, I think you probably can, but there's a limit. Mm -hmm. I think there's a limit to how much mm -hmm. basic changing of what would have been a subconscious thought mm -hmm. and what would have been a conscious thought. Mm -hmm. And I think that that has a, a little role to play an obstructive sleep apnea and or rather the uh, the psychological effects mm -hmm. of obstructive sleep apnea you know it's look at a couple of things with, with osa obstructive sleep apnea people over 40 years of age are six times more likely to breathe through an open mouth if you have your mouth open as you well know mike you can't have your tongue resting in the roof of the mouth if your tongue isn't resting in the roof of the mouth where's your tongue going to go back into your airway. throat yeah but then so it if your tongue your is facial going back form, into the airway but well, then you're more likely to form. stop breathing. And another is simply positional sleep apnea. 50% of all people with obstructive sleep apnea, if you get them to switch from their backs to their sides, 50% of people with sleep apnea, you will have their sleep apnea just by getting them to switch <laughs> off their back. My father wrote a letter into the British Dental Journal mm -hmm. some time ago when sleep apnea became started becoming this big issue. Yes. And he said, we must not forget the simple methods, yes. such as sewing half a tennis ball into the back mm -hmm. of a tight-fitting shirt sure. and yes. wearing it to bed at night. Yes, yes. And mm -hmm. the effect that it has on sleep apnea. Yes. We get it's so huge. lost in doctor, help me, yes. doctor, yes. provide me. And yes. Oh, how much does that yeah. cost? That must yeah. be good. Half a tennis ball. I think you probably yes. get one version or even, for free. You even use a rucksack. You know the little backpacks that people wear? Yep. Put a tennis, put a, a football into it. Yeah, so yeah. You, wear, you're you wear a backpack with a it? football, you're not going to roll over. Yeah, you're certainly not going to roll over. Maybe I'll try that with the kids. They're not going to fall out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I think... And the other thing is, we're talking about nasal breathing. The one thing about using your nose is the more you use it, the more it works for you. The problem yeah, is, yeah, as yeah, soon yeah, as yeah. the use nose it or is lose stuffy, it. Use you it or lose switch it. to mouth breathing. But yeah. once you switch to mouth breathing, that's it. You, 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 you know, the... Um, yeah, 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 you, you, you know, you, it is nasal breathing. You know, mm -hmm. you've got to use the system. I think it's a simple use it or lose it system. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So we're going to do a couple of videos. And yeah, it would be nice, nice to explore a few things with you, Patrick. Um, mm -hmm. Good to have you over as ever. Yeah.